you no longer have to wait to see the longer side of longer. So what's that mean? Yeah, that was a little bit weird. So I get a lot of questions about the longer lasers because I use them quite a bit and I have uh, two different ones featured in quite a few of my videos. I get a lot of questions on, you know, whether I need a 5 watt, 10 watt, 20 watt, 30 watt IR module. You know, what can I do with it? Can I cut steel? And no, you can't. None of these will do that. A dial laser doesn't cut steel. And for the most part, doesn't cut any type of metal. The uh, IR module will cut extremely, extremely thin stainless steel, almost like aluminum foil uh, thickness, but I have no use for that part of it. However, you can engrave on bronze, brass, copper, gold, silver, uh, that is jewelry, different types of metals, uh, acrylics, and I'm going to get into all the details on that and what that can and can't do. And we'll also talk about swapping between heads. Uh, for example, right now, on this is the longer B1 right here. I have the Ruby IR head on it right now to do infrared, and I'll show you some of the things that can do. Or I can swap back and put my 40 watt head on it, or my 30, or my 20. I have all three for this particular laser. One that's just a little bit out of view, and we'll get to that, it's the longer Ray 5. It's up here farther on the table. And I currently have a 40 watt head on that. And that can either be a 5, 10, 20, 30, or 40 watt head, depending on what you're going to do. And I'll kind of give you an idea on some of the things I've done with that. Now, there is some mods that I have done on the longer Ray 5 with uh, addressing the cabling. I get a lot of questions on, you know, where do I get that cable loop? You know, where can I get that? Well, we sell those on our website, and I'll put a link in the description. If you happen to have a 3D printer, uh, if you email me, I can send you the STL. You can print your own. Uh, very easy to put on, and it's nice to keep the uh, cable and the air hose up in the air. It never drags into your work. So with that said, I'm going to turn the camera around, and we're going to focus a little bit on these. I'm not actually going to make anything in this video. I just want to show you some of the features here. And This is not sponsored. This is just to address a lot of questions I get about the longer brand lasers. Now we'll start out here on the longer Ray 5. So what's some of the uh, features of this is... Uh, this has a, actually it's a touch screen, it has a micro SD card slot, and you can load files and run this without it being tethered to your computer. Um, I used to do that quite a bit, but anymore I do keep the computer tethered because I tend to want to make some changes here and there. Uh, unless I'm running batches, if I'm running batches of the same thing, and I have templates that I lay on my spoil board for that. For example, if I'm doing a whole bunch of uh, ceramic or slate coasters, I'll do 12 at a time, and I'll run them in batches off this SD card. So that's something you can do. Uh, as you can see here, I've got a couple of uh, things in there that have been made on this, and this is actually part of a future video uh, project. But it does engraving very well. And on wood, of course, that up there is uh, birch plywood. This here is on a piece of uh, western red cedar, and there's some fine detail on that, and you can see how quickly and accurately it makes its engravings. So what else can you do with this? Well, obviously, you can uh, cut and engrave black acrylic or a dark colored acrylic. Uh, you cannot do clear acrylic on a dial laser. Nor can you do clear acrylic on an IR laser. So either one, you need a CO2 laser for that. There are some shortcuts with using black plastic and black paint, and yeah, I don't mess with that. If I'm cutting clear acrylic, I do it on my CO2. Uh, obviously, it cuts leather. Here's uh, one of the keychains we made from an earlier video. So overall, you know, it's an excellent entry-level machine. I've had this one for a long time. And it's had a lot of use. In fact, you can see up here where the black paint is actually worn off where the rollers run. And looks like I need to clean that. Okay, I also run a, uh, all my lasers, I have a layout grid set up for them um, on a spoil board. And this particular one is, uh, has a three-quarter inch plywood base. And then that's half inch MDF that's uh, screwed down on top of there. The, this particular layout grid is 400 millimeters square. And it was actually started out with the... Uh, 5 watt, and then I moved to the 10 watt, then to the 20 watt, but once I got into the 30 and 40 watt, it is not entirely accurate. The center is still center, but you do know, you no longer have the full 400 millimeters of travel on the uh, Y axis because the head is much larger. 
another addition I did on this was when I upgraded to the, uh, I think it was when I did the 30 watt upgrade. When I put that on, I also installed limit switches. So now this has an auto homing feature and that is a big plus because I can work from absolute coordinates, which makes it much easier. So anything ever wore out on here? Well, things wear. You do have to keep track of your belts, make sure your belts stay tight. And the, the only real wear point on these are these wheels. They will eventually wear. Uh, don't keep your eccentric set too tight so that it's difficult to roll because you'll end up with a flat spot on those rollers. And this also applies to 3D printers or anything that has this type of setup. If you have your eccentric set too tight and this sits for a long time, you'll end up with a flat spot on your rollers. So then as the uh, either one of the gantries move, it'll go bump, 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 and it'll mess up your project. So that's something to keep in mind there. Otherwise, uh, just kind of keep things clean. I know mine's dusty here because uh, this is a functioning shop and we do a lot of things here. It's not for decoration or better homes and gardens are the best looking shop. I also have uh, some layouts in here and you can see there's a couple oopsies from over the years for laying out square items round items uh, when we do large cork bases and trivets that's what these outer circles are for this one is for four and a quarter inch tiles if I'm doing a single one if I'm doing a batch I have a, a template I lay on here to run a batch now the heads on this are swappable I can take the uh, IR head that's on the B1 and mount it back on this I do need to change the mounting plate on the back but I have that so it's, it's not a big thing to make the swap. Um, you can also swap it on the B1, which we're going to get to here in a minute. Another thing I have on the Ray 5 are uh, these 3D printed blocks that I designed and made. And I have two different styles. One is just for mounting the laser so that every time you pick it up, put it back down, it'll be in the same place. Uh, it's a very, very simple one. This one here is made to put blocks on to elevate the laser if I need uh, more working space. So let's say I needed to raise my uh, laser up by, say, 30 to, no, that's a 50 millimeter one here. 50 millimeters, I can just pop these in. They work like Legos. This just plugs in and then the laser sets in there and you can stack these as high as you like. These mounts, whether it be the basic or this style here with the different style risers, we also sell on our website. And if you happen to have a 3D printer, and email me requesting the STL, I will send you the STL. And you can print your own. Just keep in mind, your printer needs to be calibrated 100% or these will never fit together because the tolerances are very, very tight. Now we'll move over to the B1. Okay, here's the B1 and right now I have the uh, infrared head on here, IR head, and I'll show you some of the things it can do. Uh, the main difference is uh, this has a larger footprint. It's a larger working area. You can, I can do the full 400 millimeter on this square. Uh, the frame is larger, the feet are larger, so therefore I didn't make uh, any fancy 3D printed thing. I just took some blocks of wood and hole sawed some holes in it, set the feet in because I do not use this one elevated. I could make something, but I have, if I need to do that, I'll use the Ray 5 or one of my other lasers. So what can this IR head do since it's on here? Well, I'll show you. I'll show you this piece of clear acrylic that I was trying to get the IR head to cut through just to see if it would do it. And it scores a little bit and grades a little bit, but it does not cut it, even with repeated passes. Again, if you're going to do clear acrylic, you need a CO2 laser. Do leather? Yes, you can with the IR head, although the, uh, di the other diode laser works much quicker. But yes, it's possible. Here's This was cut using the IR head. And the engraving is small, but it is very, very accurate. Acrylic. And this is cast acrylic, not extruded. Uh, no, it doesn't make yellow letters. That's been rubbed over with some paint to fill that in so you can see it better. Uh, it does cut it. It takes quite a few passes to cut. The, this is pretty thick here. This is uh, eighth inch acrylic. But it does cut it, and it does an uh, excellent job of engraving it. Uh, I think the engraving part using the IR head is a little bit more precise than the diode, at least with 
with a 40 watt. I think if I dropped to a 10 watt diode, it would probably work better. But you can do uh, dark acrylics. Metals, and somebody's gonna scream because this is galvanized, and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that. It will etch the galvanizing, and I had the doors open when I was doing this, so don't think I poisoned myself. And I'm trying to move this. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that engraving right there or not, but it does engrave on galvanized, although I don't recommend doing galvanized inside. It generates a, I didn't see any smoke coming off of it, but it could potentially create some smoke. Next up here is uh, it's a pair of channel locks, and they were well used. And I, hopefully you can see the engraving there. I engraved my name on the side right there. I'll try to move this back and forth a little bit with the light. So first I thought, why don't I just try it without cleaning the metal off first, just leaving it as it was from use over the years. So I did. And this is a dirty side, and yeah, you can kind of see it there. But I do recommend if you're going to be engraving on your tools or something to uh, clean them off first. Get all the rust and gunk and everything off out of the way. Another nice feature the B1 has uh, regarding air assist is your air assist pump, that USB power cable, US, or your uh, air pump plugs in right there. And you are able to turn the air assist pump on and off from light burn according to uh, what you're cutting or engraving. That's a real nice feature because you don't have your air pump running constantly. This also has a key switch right here that you can uh, turn off and take the key out so that if you have any little ones around, they aren't messing with it. And it also has an emergency stop button right there. So if you have a oopsie, you can hit that and it will stop everything immediately. Uh, the only disadvantage to that is if you're reaching over there to do something while the laser's running, make sure you don't bump that with your arm. Guess how I know that? It's involved with changing from the IR head back to your regular head. It's actually quite simple. Loosen up your screw on the side here. You slide the module out. Carefully unplug the wire connector. This is the IR head right here. I'm going to put the 40 watt back in here. So what I want to do first is reconnect my wire on the back. And this is keyed so you don't do it wrong. And you shouldn't have to force anything. This goes in there like that. It's got a little keeper right there for the cable. Then you can just slide this back down in the dovetail. I'm just going to set it at a random spot here. Then my air assist hose I had tucked back out of the way in the Velcro while I had the IR head on. You don't use air assist with that. Just put this back down through. And just plug it back into the side. Right there. Just that simple. And you can set your focus and go on to your next project. And another nice thing about the B1 is with that large working area, I can do uh, multiple cuts like this is uh, something we just cut out here recently. Uh, for a project. I had to do several of these sheets like this and it's very easy to do and especially with that uh, automatic air assist coming on and off when you want it to. This is also engraving in that besides just the cutting. So I hope that answers some questions about these two lasers. Uh, again this isn't sponsored or anything. This is in response to a lot of questions that I get all the time. You know, is the longer ray 5 a good entry level laser? I've never used a laser before. Is the B1 a good laser? I've never used a laser before. Is uh, the B1 worth upgrading to? You know, I've got a brand X over here that I haven't been happy with. Can I get one of these? Is it a good investment? Well, in my opinion, yes. There's a lot of brands out there. Um, I'm not going to get into every one I have. I have 16 lasers. But these are literally workhorses. They're not just for the, yes you can do the just occasional little hobby thing, but if you're in this to make some money and you want to crank out some projects, there's a lot of things you can do with either one of these lasers. Okay, so the next question I get, should I get a 5 watt, a 10 watt, a 30 watt, a 40 watt, you know, the IR? It depends what you're doing. It depends on the project. Obviously you don't make soup in a colander. So you have to have the right tool for the right job. 
If you're going to be doing a lot of cutting and engraving on wood, the IR module is not the way to go. If you're doing things on metals and you need to do some uh, etching and engraving on metals, then yes, the IR head is uh, the way to go. Okay, regarding the regular blue diode heads, 5 watt, 10 watt, 20 watt, 30 watt, 40 watt, if you're doing a lot of cutting, and I mean a lot of cutting, go as much as your budget will allow. Uh, for example, I've got 40 watt heads on these when I'm, because we do a lot of cutting, but I also do a lot of engraving, and if I need to get really precise with the engrave, I will drop back to either the 10 watt or the 20 watt head, because it has a much finer point. It depends on what you're doing, so something to keep in mind. Uh, can you cut? like eighth inch plywood with a five watt laser yes you can but it takes a while uh, a 10 watt is better for that or higher uh, when you get up into the quarter inch material and, and thicker i'd go with a 30 or 40 watt because you're going to be forever with a 10 or 20 watt on that and you get a quarter inch stuff yeah a five watt will eventually do it but not the best thing uh, one other thing i need to mention about the ir head is uh, with focus on these, they have different methods to focus and little kickstands. For example, the IR head here. There's a little kickstand that drops down. You see it there. Put that down on your material that you're going to be engraving on. Uh, tighten up the screw and then put the kickstand back up. With an IR head, it is extremely important to have accurate focus. Uh, on a uh, head like this 40 watt, yeah, you could be a millimeter or two off and it would still do the job. On this, no. Your focus area tolerance is one millimeter or less. This needs to be set very, very accurately in a few, for you to have an accurate result. So just something to keep in mind. And it's not just this brand. All the IR lasers are like that. The focus tolerance is extremely close. So you have to really be accurate. So that's... Uh, coverage of these longer lasers you no longer have to wait to hear about longer so if you got anything out of this appreciate getting a thumbs up always helps the channel i'll put links in the description on both of these lasers and some of the other parts and pieces you can get i'm roger in the shop thanks for watching see you in the next one